Hey guys, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to another video here. Now today I'm going to be talking about jet efflux and also static thrust. Now to explain these terms, I have a few items that I want to show you that's going to help explain them. So the first one that I have here is a 22 pound force turbine. This is about 100 newtons of force that this can produce. We want to compare this up against a, an 80 millimeter electric ducted fan unit. Now as you can see from that uh, angle there, this fan unit, this electric fan unit that I have in my right hand is about the same size and diameter as our jet turbine however we do know that these operate very very differently and have much different power outputs we'll talk about those and how they apply to our airplane very shortly I also have a couple other fan units here one is a 70 millimeter fan unit and the other one is a 28 millimeter fan unit we're gonna be comparing the 70 millimeter up against the other two that I just showed you now the 28 millimeter fan unit is actually located in this aircraft now this aircraft is going to help me demonstrate the actual values that we want to talk about today. So the first parameter and definition that we need to define is for our static thrust. Now when we refer to static thrust, this is when we have the airplane static, that's the static component. We're not going to move the airplane, it's going to be fixed. With that said, we know that the electric ducted fan motor in here is also fixed, it's not going to move. Then we spin those motors up to maximum speed and we measure the thrust that we are getting. You know, this has two fan units within it. So if we're measuring the thrust of one motor, we would of course divide that thrust by two. So we measure the amount of force that this is going to produce and that is going to be represented as our static thrust. Now when we talk about jet efflux, it's a different component. The jet efflux is the amount of airspeed that we're getting from our fan unit. The airspeed is going to be the speed that we're able to measure at the very end of the ducting. So the ducting in this case exists right here. It's the speed of air that's coming out of this fan unit when the motors are at maximum RPM. So now that we have our efflux definition and we also have our static thrust definition, we need to understand these components. So what is the importance of jet efflux? Well, the jet efflux is the maximum speed of the air that comes out of our jet fan. What we know about this is we cannot have an airplane that goes faster than the jet efflux number in level flight. So in other words, let's assume that the jet efflux of this airplane is coming out at 100 kilometers an hour. What we know is that this airplane then would not be able to hit 100 kilometers an hour. What we do know about the plane is it's going to be able to hit a speed where drag as well as thrust are at equilibrium. They are equal from each other. So let's assume that this airplane produces about 5 ounces of thrust at around 60 kilometers an hour. At 60 kilometers an hour, it is actually able to produce 5 ounces of drag. Those numbers are in equilibrium. The net force is zero. That is the maximum speed that this airplane would be able to reach. Therefore, if we have a static thrust of five ounces, we also know that we would never be able to hit that 60 kilometers an hour. The static thrust is always going to go down once the plane enters flight speeds. As soon as you gain one kilometer an hour, that static thrust is already lower. The faster you go, the lower that static thrust becomes, that the lower the thrust. And of course, if you're moving, it's obviously no longer static. It's now going to be known as dynamic thrust. Dynamic thrust is very important to us. It kind of works hand in hand with the speed of the airplane. So now let's take a look at our jet turbine. So the jet turbine here, like I mentioned earlier in the video, this is 100 newtons, which works out to be about the 22 pound mark. Now I have a chart that I can put up the screen. Uh, I'm going to be referring to it here on a sheet that I have. What's important about this jet turbine is it is producing a bunch of power and this power obviously exits the nozzle at the end. However, what we do know, if you compare the nozzle differences, this is the 80 millimeter versus our jet fan, our jet turbine here. So you can see the nozzle difference is going to be very different. Now, of course, the nozzle on this fan is not going to be this big. It's going to be a little bit smaller to represent the actual fan swept area. If you don't know what the fan swept area is, we do have that on the radio control info site that you'd be able to look up and get an understanding more of what that means. 
However, for the purpose of this jet turbine, we know that it produces 22 pounds. And the reason why we're talking about the size of the fan is in order to produce those 22 pounds of thrust, we have to have air coming out of this and exiting at very, very high velocities. This is going to be well in excess of 800 kilometers an hour in this jet turbine. So now let's look at how our values appear if we put this into a plane. Now I know that the airplane that receives and takes this it travels at a very absolute maximum speed of around 170 to 180 miles per hour. This is gonna be somewhere around 300 kilometers an hour. So the chart that I have up here is going to be representing of a maximum speed of 300 kilometers an hour. And the values that you see are both in pound force as well as uh, pounds or force in newtons. So if we look at the pound force value, we know that we start off when this jet turbine is at zero kilometers an hour, so it's sitting static, we get 22 pounds of force. As we propel through the air, this is going to start dropping off. However, because the efflux is so high, so ridiculously high, that it doesn't really drop off that much. At a speed of 300 kilometers an hour, we still maintain somewhere around 18, 19 or so pounds of thrust. And I know that that aircraft is at a maximum speed somewhere around that mark. That also suggests to us that the drag of that aircraft is actually matching the thrust of this turbine. And because those are in equilibrium, we now reach an absolute maximum speed. Now, what's really interesting about the jet turbine is they're not that efficient for us because we are wasting so much energy out the back of this turbine. Our E-flux speeds, our jet E-flux speeds of this turbine are still very high. A maximum speed of 300, but we know that we're in excess of 800 kilometers an hour of E-flux speeds. We're wasting like 500 kilometers an hour of air. Now, if we ended up designing this a little bit differently, we could achieve that difference in efficiency. However, because the costs are so crazy and we don't really care about fuel efficiencies in these jet turbines, this is what we stick with. Now, let's jump into an electric ductive fan and see the comparison of how that plays a, a role for us. The next one we're going to look at is our 80 millimeter electric ducted fan unit. Now I know that the airplane that this is installed can reach a maximum speed of 160 to 170 kilometers an hour. So we also know that the jet efflux of this EDF is approximately 250 kilometers an hour. Therefore, the maximum speed that you could ever achieve is 250 kilometers an hour. That would assume that you have an airframe that produces zero drag, but we know that there is no such thing as an airframe that's ever gonna produce zero drag. It's always gonna be something greater than that. So we look at our chart and we also know that the speed of the aircraft is going to be somewhere around the 160, 170 kilometers an hour mark. So I am able to also figure out the thrust that I see from this ducted fan jet. So this is going to be somewhere around two and a half or so pounds. So this two and a half pounds at about the 160 kilometers, 170 kilometers an hour is the amount of force or thrust that I get out of this fan unit while installed in the airplane at that speed. That speed also represents our drag force because they're in equilibrium that is the maximum speed of our airplane so the importance of this fan unit is we are making more effective use of the actual speed that we get out of the fan unit we're getting a maximum of 250 kilometers an hour and yet we are able to achieve 150 kilometers an hour of speed out of this fan unit you know you can see that as the airplane picks up more and more speed the amount of thrust we get out of this unit actually drops off quicker and quicker and quicker however we're not wasting a lot of energy as well that's why diameter plays an effective role for us if we maximize our diameter we're able to produce uh, a good amount of thrust at a specific speed. Now, if we look at our next example, our 70 millimeter fan unit, it's very similar. So if we look at the jet efflux that we get out of this unit, we're going to get a little bit less. So this is going to be somewhere around 195 kilometers an hour. And it's actually a quite a mild setup that is placed into this unit. Uh, this setup allows for the plane to hit somewhere around 130 kilometers an hour in level flight. So it's not a fast airplane by any stretch of the imagination, but it's reliable. Uh, one of the things that we can see from this chart is that at 130 kilometers an hour or so, we're looking at a thrust output from this motor of around a 
pound and a third, not even. Somewhere around 1.25 pounds of thrust is going to be coming out of this electric ducted fan motor. Now, the question would be, if I want to increase the amount of speed I get out of this airplane, what do I have to do? Well, we talked about all this thrust at speed, which is really a dynamic thrust. In order to increase the speed of our aircraft, I have to increase the dynamic thrust of this fan unit. The way that I can do that is by increasing the speed that I'm able to spin of this fan unit. So if I increase the KV of the motor, I can increase my efflux coming out of the ducted fan and that will give me more thrust. It's going to consume more power to do that, but I'm going to get more thrust. I'm also going to get more static thrust on the very low end as well. So it's going to be a complete shift of thrust through the whole entire speed range of the aircraft. There you go. Now to sum it all up, if you have a radio controlled electric ducted fan unit, your efflux is the maximum speed that you'll ever be able to hit in level flight with that fan unit. Now because your aircraft produces drag, it's going to be lower than that, the actual speed that you hit. If you want to increase the speed of your electric ducted fan jet, you have to increase the thrust component at a specific speed. So you're increasing the dynamic thrust. This is going to be to overcome the drag at that specific speed. As long as you have more thrust than you have uh, drag, you're going to be able to accelerate up until that point where you reach that equilibrium. At that point, no more acceleration, you hit a maximum speed. Remember, efflux is very important. If you have a jet fan unit that is 150 millimeters in diameter, but your efflux component is only 100 kilometers an hour, you're not going to be able to go any faster than 100 kilometers an hour. That's going to be a pretty sad electric duct to fan jet. So keep that in mind that you're looking for thrust as well as jet efflux out of the electric ducted fan jet, as well as the turbine, you know, but turbines produce gobs of jet efflux so you get much different cases for each installation or application. Now I hope this covers all the questions that you may have with uh, efflux as well as static thrust and the differences and how they compare and what you need of each. If you have any more additional questions don't forget to leave them in the comments section. Like the video if you do and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss another upload. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.